Mike Piper, Accounting Made Simple, Accounting Explained in 100 Pages or Less. Welcome to the world of Accounting Made Simple. In just 100 pages, Mike Piper demystifies complex accounting concepts, making them accessible to everyone. In this summary, you can expect to learn the fundamentals of accounting equations, balance sheets, income statements, and cash flow statements. Furthermore, we will delve into financial analysis, with a focus on liquidity and profitability ratios. Finally, we will touch upon the generally accepted accounting principles SCAP, and the importance of double-entry accounting. Whether you're a budding entrepreneur or a curious individual, this summary will guide you through the intricacies of accounting in a user-friendly and engaging manner. Demystifying Accounting Basics Accounting may appear daunting, but it's built on a straightforward logical foundation. The accounting equation calculates a company's financial position using assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. Assets represent everything the company owns, while liabilities encompass all the company's debts. The owner's equity, or shareholder's equity, is the difference between assets and liabilities, representing the company's ownership portion once all liabilities are paid off. No matter the size or type of business, the accounting equation holds true, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity or assets, liabilities equals owner's equity. Understanding this equation helps to decode the balance sheet, shedding light on the financial health of a company, enabling you to make better informed decisions. Imagine running a simple lemonade stand having $100 worth of assets, including lemonade, cups, and uniforms. Money borrowed from family members, $60, would be considered the liabilities in this small business. To calculate the owner's equity, use the equation, subtracting the borrowed amount from the total assets, $100 assets, $60 liabilities equals $40 owner's equity. Even in major life decisions such as purchasing a property, the accounting equation is applicable. If you buy a house worth $300,000 with a $230,000 mortgage, your home equity would be calculated as $300,000 assets, $230,000 liabilities equals $70,000 equity. As you pay off the mortgage, your equity increases. It's essential to remember that one person's assets may also be another person's liabilities and vice versa. Take the above property example. The mortgage is a liability for you, but it is an asset for the bank. By exploring the accounting equation, you can better understand financial situations and make educated decisions, whether for business or personal use. Balance Sheet Simplified the accounting equation is the cornerstone of a balance sheet, which is a snapshot of your firm's financial position at any point in time. It includes assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. Assets can be divided into categories such as cash, inventory, accounts receivable, and property, plant, and equipment. For example, in a lemonade stand business, the balance sheet would list the value of the stand, cash on hand, inventory, and any outstanding payments. Liabilities represent what your business owes, such as accounts payable and loans. In the lemonade stand example, liabilities would include the money owed to the grocer for the lemons and any loan taken from a family member. And finally, owner's equity covers common stock and retained earnings, like the initial investment to open the business and any income not distributed as dividends. Combining these elements in a balance sheet for the lemonade stand would look like Assets, $100 Cash and cash equivalents, $15 Inventory, $30 Accounts receivable, $5 Property, plant and equipment, $50 Liabilities, $60 Accounts payable, $20 Notes payable, $40 Owner's equity, $40. Common stock, $15. Retained earnings, $25. This example demonstrates the accounting equation, liabilities plus owner's equity equals assets, which is essential to a well-balanced financial statement.
In this case, $60 plus $40 equals $100, proving that the equation holds true. Decoding the income statement. The income statement is a critical document that tracks your company's financial performance over a specific period of time. It reveals the organization's profitability by calculating the net income resulting from the difference between revenue and expenses. To understand the income statement, you need to know its key components, such as revenue, cost of goods sold, COGS, gross profit, and expenses, and how they interact. Imagine running a t-shirt business. The income statement begins by showcasing your revenue, which refers to the amount earned through sales. If you sell 100 t-shirts at $25 each, your revenue would be $2,500. Next in line is the cost of goods sold, COGS, which represents the expenses incurred in producing the t-shirts. If it costs $12 to manufacture one and you make 100, the COGS would be $1,200. To compute the gross profit, subtract the COGS from the revenue, $2,500 to $1,200, resulting in $1,300 in this example. Now that the gross profit has been calculated, it's time to account for expenses. Your t-shirt business may require rental space, employee compensation, marketing, and insurance to operate. Let's assume these expenses tally up to $1,000. The final step in the income statement process is determining your net income. To do this, subtract your total expenses from the gross profit, $1,300 to $1,000. In this case, the net income would be $300. A positive net income, like the $300 in this example, signifies profitability, congratulations. However, a negative net income would indicate that your business is losing money and needs to adopt strategic changes to reverse the downward trend. Overall, understanding the income statement provides valuable insights into how your company performs financially over time, allowing you to make informed decisions for future growth. Mastering Cash Flow Statements a cash flow statement is a vital accounting document that tracks the inflows and outflows of cash within a business, offering insight into when money is earned and spent. Broken down into three categories, operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities, it provides an accurate snapshot of a company's financial health, helping determine possible routes to bankruptcy. Diving into the world of cash flow statements, you may wonder why this financial tool garners such importance. In essence, cash flow statements record the movement of cash in your business, bridging the gap between income and expenses in a way that other documents, like income statements or balance sheets, can't do alone. Picture a scenario where your business provided marketing services in September, but payment was only received in October. Profit and loss statements and balance sheets would reflect this sale in September, but not the actual payment, which would only be incorporated in October's cash flow statement. These crucial statements are divided into three sections, operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. Operating activities encompass transactions related to net income, such as sales, employee and supplier payments, and taxes. Investing activities, on the other hand, deal with cash movements concerning investments and capital assets like stocks, bonds, properties, and equipment. Finally, financing activities pertain to the flow of cash between your business and its owners or creditors, including dividends and borrowings. By diligently recording and categorizing all relevant cash movements based on these three areas, you can calculate your firm's net increase in cash, creating a comprehensive cash flow statement. This statement is essential to understanding the financial health of your business, enabling you to predict when your bank account might run dry and signaling potential bankruptcy. By mastering cash flow statements, you will be better prepared to steer your business toward success and financial stability. Decoding Financial Ratios Financial ratios help determine a company's financial health by examining its liquidity and profitability. Liquidity ratios, such as the current and quick ratios, assess a company's ability to meet short-term obligations. The higher the ratio, the better its financial health. 
Profitability ratios like return on assets and return on equity ratios demonstrate how efficiently a company utilizes its assets and investor money for generating profits. Understanding these ratios allows for better analysis of your company's financial well-being. Crunching numbers to understand a company's financial stability can be quite challenging. However, financial ratios make this task simpler. These ratios act as crucial indicators of an organization's financial health, examining liquidity and profitability. First, let's look at liquidity ratios. These reveal a company's ability to meet short-term financial obligations. The higher the liquidity ratio, the better its financial health. The current ratio measures the ability to pay current liabilities using current assets. The formula to calculate this is, current ratio equals current assets divided by current liabilities. A stable company should have a current ratio of at least one. Another liquidity ratio is the quick ratio, which calculates a worst-case scenario by excluding inventory from the assets. It's computed as follows, quick ratio equals, current assets, inventory, divided by current liabilities. A lower quick ratio indicates potential struggles in meeting liabilities if inventory sales slow down. Moving on to profitability ratios, these demonstrate a company's ability to generate profit relative to its size. The return on assets ratio reveals the efficiency of a company in using its assets to create profits. It's calculated with the formula, return on assets equals net income divided by total assets. Similarly, the return on equity ratio quantifies the efficiency of using investor money and shareholder equity for generating profits. The formula for this ratio is, return on equity equals net income divided by shareholder equity. By understanding and calculating these financial ratios, you can efficiently analyze your company's financial health, allowing you to make informed decisions for your organization's future. Mastering Gap and Double Entry Accounting To prepare an accurate financial statement, it's essential to follow the generally accepted accounting principles, GAAP, which include the double entry accounting system. In this system, both increases and decreases are recorded in their corresponding accounts to balance the accounting equation. Instead of using terms like increase or decrease, professional accounting practices use debit and credit. When recording these transactions, list debited accounts first on the left and credit accounts next, indented to the right. Consolidate these transactions in the general ledger, the foundation of any financial statement. Before diving into your financial statement, it's important to understand the generally accepted accounting principles, GAAP, a set of widely recognized best practices found in many countries, including the United States. One key aspect of GAAP is the double-entry accounting system and the use of debits and credits. You may be familiar with single-entry accounting, which deals with single transaction records. For example, when you purchase a laptop, minus $1,000 is noted in your bank account or credit card statement to represent the laptop's cost. However, GAP-approved double-entry accounting balances this process by recording both increases and decreases in the respective accounts. When accounting for the laptop transaction, you would document minus $1,000 as a cash decrease and plus $1,000 as an asset increase. To further distinguish between private and professional accounting, the terms debit and credit are used rather than increase and decrease. Increases in assets are registered as debits, while decreases are noted as credits. The same applies to liabilities, with decreases logged as debits and increases as credits. Record debited accounts first and on the left side of the statement. Credit accounts follow on the next line, indented to the right. In the laptop example, the transaction would appear as Doctor, debit, office equipment $1,000. CR, credit, material expenses $1,000. This shows that $1,000 is added to the office equipment account while being subtracted from the material expenses, or cash, account. Finally, consolidate each transaction in the general ledger, the cornerstone of a company's accounting documents and the basis for generating your financial statement.
Congratulations! You've just navigated your way through the key points of Accounting Made Simple. We've explored essential accounting concepts, such as the accounting equation, balance sheets, income and cash flow statements. Additionally, we've uncovered insightful ways to analyze a company's financial health using liquidity and profitability ratios. And finally, we have become acquainted with the generally accepted accounting principles, GAAP, double-entry accounting, and the importance of the general ledger. Having grasped these fundamental accounting principles, you are now better equipped to analyze financial statements and make more informed decisions. Remember, accounting is no dark art, it's a logical, organized system that you, too, can master.